All right, today we're going to go over the assembly and troubleshooting of a Smith & Wesson M&P magazine. Here we go. We've got the magazine extension disassembled. We're going to take the mag tube, reinsert the follower in the spring, and made up those two items. This is a little tricky, which is part of why we're doing it on film. So you can see that I'm holding the spring in with my thumb as I fit the floor plate into place. It's a little tight. But there it goes. You don't need to tighten this down super tight. Just about like that is fine. Notice I'm using the short end of the short end of the wrench, not the long end, because it just needs to be barely finger tight. Now we're gonna load it. I like using the Glock loading tool for this because it fits the 9mm 40 Smith & Wesson 9 volt magazines very well. It speeds the process considerably. You can use an Uplula if you like. I just happen to like the Glock one. Okay. 16. Oh, I can see that we're going to have some interference from the fall where you can see how the things have gotten real tight. This is because the follower is hitting that little rounded corner in the bottom, which we'll show you here in a moment using a still image because it's difficult to capture. Meanwhile, I'm going to pull ammo out, disassemble the system, and show you how to modify the follower just in case that happens to you. It doesn't happen all the time, it just happens sometimes. It's more common with the black follower than with the gray follower. And we'll show you the fix. What's happening is this little sharp corner and sometimes this little sharp corner are catching at a very small misalignment between the mag tube and the magazine extension. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a slight bevel on this surface and take a little bit of material off the left hand corner in particular. So here's how we do that. This is a scotch bright wheel on a common bench grinder. You can do this with a file or a piece of emery board or any of several things. But all I'm doing Putting a little edge on this. Okay. Now, as you'll see, we have not taken off much in the way of material. We've just rounded the corners. That's it. Unless somebody knew what they were looking for, they probably wouldn't see that. So, now we'll put it back on. Okay, so here we are with a modified follower. We've rounded off this these corners. We've taken a little bit of material off the left-hand corner in particular. But as you can see, we've not dramatically changed the shape of anything. This isn't getting any shorter, really. It's just got some corners rounded off. So, now we'll put it back together again. But once you get the Fort Knox system bolted back down, basically, if you get this off, you broke something. So, here we go again. Back loading our magazine. And 11. We're working with the 40 Smith & Wesson magazine today. So the normal capacity is 15 rounds. There's 15. 16. And there's the, there's the hitch we had before. Only now, we've pushed right past it. And I'm going to do it again a couple of times to make sure that the follower can get by whatever it is that it was catching on on the way into the magazine. Stripping it back down to 15. Six, eight, there it is again. My design philosophy has always been I would much rather you have difficulty getting the magazine, getting the ammunition into the magazine, than have, ever have any problem getting it out. And so that's how we've designed things. That occasionally a Taylor Freelance magazine extension will be somewhat difficult to load, but it will always work when you unload it. So, how many rounds did I get in there? Watch the tray. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and one that's on the floor somewhere. There it is. 20. Taylor Freelance 140 millimeter floor plate. In 40 Smith & Wesson, plus five. 